The role of China is increasingly important in the international arena and China's role and place in regulatory reform and banking reform worldwide is obviously an important peg in the whole story. We're very, very pleased to be able to speak with Mr. Han Ming Si, the Director General of the International Department of CBRC or the China Banking Regulatory Commission. Mr. Han, thank you very much for speaking with us today. Give us a sense of the topmost conversation that the CBRC is having with global partners today. Yeah, uh, thank you very much yeah, for inviting me and to have such an interview with you. Yeah. And I think it's uh, the first uh, I would like to say uh, China became a member of uh, FSB and the BCBS last year. And uh, for those activities over there, we actively participate in those um, the meetings or the activities, uh, either with the BCBS or, or with the FSB. And uh, I think that right now, yeah, we have um, so many issues to be discussed on the international arena, but the, for the banking regulatory reform or something like this, I think it's, uh, it's a highly necessary, it's the right time yeah, for the BCBS um, and also for FSB, even for G20. We have um, spent a lot of time yeah, and on those issues and, and we're trying to get uh, some findings um, from the discussions among members of BCBS and FSB. And uh, the important one is uh, the definition of capital. Yeah. Um, but to my understanding, I think it's uh, necessary at this moment uh, to have such a reasonable level for the capital. Yeah. Because uh, if, you, if we trace back to 1988, Basel Accord, yeah, we only, we, at that time, I think, yeah, we, we only got such an agreement on 8% as minimum capital requirement. So we see from the crisis and that, it was, that was not functioning, yeah, so we should have some more. Yeah. Uh, but in the China's case, and we, we try to have such a division of labor, yeah, and especially for the small banks and also for the large banks. And for the smaller banks, I think we have 10% capital adequacy ratio for them. But for the large banks, we have 11%. I don't want to see we have add on more buffers or more capital yeah, on, the, on the shoulders of the, of the, of the banks. But uh, I think it's uh, highly necessary right now yeah, because um, if you can out such um, adequate capital, yeah, you cannot um, to deal with uh, unexpected losses. Mm. Yeah, but on the other hand, we, we also have some other measures to deal with, like a provisioning, dynamic provisioning. Yeah. The reasons for adding capital and, uh, and the issues that are being discussed on, in the international forums is somewhat so different from the institutions in China. Uh, in the international forum, the, a lot of the discussion has to do with adding capital for financial institutions that take on high proprietary trading risks. Mm -hmm. Chinese banks, by and large, are, are not in that space. They, they are commercial banks. They, they are very strong loan books, basically. And with very strong loan books, one would argue that an 8% capital adequacy would be sufficient. Mm -hmm. Why does China have that additional two to three percent, um, why that additional safeguard? You seem to be, um, uh, you, you seem to be setting for yourself a standard that is uh, slightly higher uh, than is necessary for a commercial banking system. Yeah, you are right, yeah. And we don't have so much activities or the tradings yeah, over there by the Chinese commercial banks. But uh, I think, yeah, because uh, we moved from such um, the old situation over there, yeah. at that time, yeah, uh, the banks in China and, uh, had only less than 8%, uh, even 4% or 6% uh, for the capital. Yeah. So we need to accumulate such a capital for the banks, and uh, it's much easier for them to deal with the, the, the crisis in the future, especially for the smaller banks. If uh, 
they really want to have such intention there yeah, to expand their loan, loans extended to the to their cl uh, their clients. I think maybe we have used uh, the capital as a measure to have such control over their over expansion of credits over there. Yeah, but for the, for the, of course for the large banks, yeah, we so, we also have the same mechanism. Yeah, of course. Uh, no, we have to use the same tool, but for the different purposes. How real is the prospect of um, a cyclical you know, crisis taking place if China puts in more capital requirement at a time when, say, the, you know, the system is undergoing stress, uh, which is what happened in the rest of the world um, in, in terms of um, the more capital requirements that you put in place, you take capital out of the need to create liquidity in the marketplace. How possible is that scenario in, in China? I think it's uh, quite possible, yeah. Because in good times, uh, the banks can accumulate capital, yeah. So they can use the capital accumulated in the good times to deal with um, the problems in the bad times, yeah. So I just now explained why we have such a higher capital ratio over there, yeah. Uh, because um, in China, especially for the banks, they have such an intention to expand their business, yeah. So especially for last year, yeah, they they were quite eager yeah, to do something more, yeah. So we just um, gave them such a signal, yeah. If you cannot meet such a capital requirement. You cannot expand your business. In the world, we are in agreement with other members of the BCBS. We should have such an add-on capital over there. Yeah, but I don't think it's necessary to have more capital on the shoulders of the of the banks. Yeah, because if you have more capital, you that is to say, you cannot have more profits in the future, especially produced by the banks. Yeah. Why has China been quite non-committal to agreeing to new requirements being put up by BIS? Um, even the new Basel II framework, uh, China has postponed um, you know, committing itself to a Basel II time frame uh, several times. Um, what's the thinking behind that? What, what's, why is China uh, not... Um, you know, very simply agreeing to the Basel II framework, for example. In terms of the implementation of Basel II, I think yeah, we are in the process right now. Yeah, to be frank with you, yeah, by the end of this year, the CBRC will receive the applications from those large banks in China. Yeah, for Basel II. For Basel II, yeah. The base standardized framework or and the IRB approach. Okay. Yeah. So to be frank with you, we don't trust the rating agencies. Yeah. So we ask banks to have such an internal assessment by themselves. Yeah. That, uh, that's on one hand. On the other hand, we still have some concerns about the loopholes or the weaknesses in the Basel II framework. Yeah. So right now, uh, we're trying to uh, correct those um, the weaknesses in the Basel II yeah, together with other members of the BCBS, and especially in the 16th of April, we read, we submit the recommendations to the BCBS to the Basel Committee, yeah, and we try to get a very clear definition for the capital. We try to get a very clear picture about the implementation of Basel II by other members yeah, in the world, and <clears throat> I think um, uh, in general. We can, in such agreement with the Basel II concepts, but uh, in practice, we also need to do something more. Yeah, to consider the, the specific situation in China. Yeah, if we cannot just follow the rules over there without any consideration about uh, China's situation, we could make such a mistake in the future.